Where are we going? Where we came for. <laughs> Welcome to Horga. And happy midsummer. Skål! Skål! Midsommar is something of a companion to Hereditary in that both films are very much about family. And I also feel that both films deal with codependency in a way, although this film goes deeper into that. Hey, babe. How you feeling? I just really need to not be here right now. Yeah. But it's also an adult fairy tale, and in many ways it's sort of perverse wish fulfillment fantasy with Danny and her dilemma at the center. That's not her again. Babe, what's happening? I always like genre as a filter through which you can sort of pass more personal material. You okay? I just saw a way to take that like folk horror space and use it as an excuse to exercise the demons of the moment. We first meet Danny when she's in a very precarious place in her relationship with Christian. Well, I just apologize, Danny. You didn't apologize, you said sorry, which sounds more like too bad. This horrible thing that happens to her seals them, them both into this relationship. It's a painful process for her, but she's at least on a journey to reconciling the, the mania that's taking place around her. And so from there, I wrote Midsommar as sort of a surrealist breakup movie. You've been wanting out of this stupid relationship for like a year now. Christian and his friends are planning to go to Sweden to attend a Midsummer celebration, and Danny is pulled along as sort of the unwanted fifth wheel. How long have you two been together? Just over three and a half years. Four years. You're right. I'm sorry. You're right. Mm -hmm. Four years. Their relationship, which is already on pretty flimsy legs, is going to be tested. It's almost like this place, Horga, is forcing them together, but in the wrong way, because then it dissolves immediately. Are you sure about this? Yes, I think it's going to be fun. He wanted to make a breakup movie. He wanted to make a movie that people would like go and watch in the cinema when they were going through a breakup, which is really insanely raw in this case. I don't know why I'm here! Ari spoke about this movie in the context of breakup films. And while this is a very kind of unorthodox take on that, I think it is a really, really interesting look at the core, how we treat our fellow human beings, and particularly those that we're in a relationship with, that being a friendship, a professional relationship, or a romantic one. The way that it ends is probably the worst breakup ever. You guys should join. Oh no, I'm too scared. I was excited about building a world that felt very healthy and lush, and then by the end it becomes kind of overripe. He's a really visual storyteller. He makes the, the camera a character. And you have a relationship with the camera all the time. That's how Ari works. Everything is planned and everything is smooth and you go again until you get it right. It's very textured, emotionally and visually. Each scene comes with a set of kind of choreography. There was something interesting and spooky about the fact that there was so much detail in his script. Something as simple as cup going down or someone taking a drink. You never really read that in scripts, and if you do, and it's from a different writer to a different director, you know that that's not really going to be portrayed on screen. It's very specific. There's no heavy-handed foreshadowing, which just allows you to just go on this journey and be surprised by the weird things you see. No, no, why would anything go to plan in Ari Aster's films? We meet this village in this very ideal, picturesque, utterly perfect setting. Unbelievable. It's like another world. Just to walk down here from base camp and into this community it feels like a portal to this place. You can always find something new. Be curious about that. What, what does this mean? Why is this here? It's so serene and colorful. Every single building is filled with beautiful things like pots and pans. And we're in the middle of a field right now. And it's been amazing to kind of like settle in here. And it's so rare, you never get to do that. The scale of what has been created around us is phenomenal. 
and the amount of work that must have gone into it, I can't even believe it lends such a great sense of like reality to to what we're doing and the production value of this thing is second to none people have gone above and beyond the call of duty to make this feel real you have to invent it as you go you have to feel it out all the way and it's very tricky to do we fight time and the elements the position of this place it's it's a lot of things that makes it very difficult. The fact that there's just a full-on village here that is that feels like it functions very much as a real place is it's it sort of it, once once you once you get to here it's easy to just sort of like allow yourself to just be in the scene. We have this main house which is decorated with so much art. I think Midsummer is going to be one of those films that people feel encouraged to see a number of times so that they pick up on the things they missed in the first place. All of these frames are like kind of like pointillism paintings. Oh wow. You see what you mean about the pageantry. Yeah, we make those clothes special for every winter and summer solstice. We I mean everybody sort of does everything together. The costume department have worked for months. They've had to dress every single one of the encore actors who are playing walkers in these costumes that have been hand painted. Which are all embroidered one by one. It was really maybe one of the biggest challenges in my life to create these costumes because they are not really related to anything. I had to reinvent from scratch. They had an impossible task on their hands. Every single costume is adorned with different pieces of the affect language as well as like runic symbolism. They all have special characters showing their feelings and behaviors by their costumes. I, I love what you're wearing. My frock? Uh-huh. Yeah, quite girly. The work that's gone into it is unbelievable. Tomorrow's a big day. Is it scary? You want to come meet my friends? We only do this every 90 years. Horga is a community of people in northern Sweden. Their bloodline has been very carefully preserved and believe very much in reciprocity. This festival, which only happens once every 90 years, is their way of maintaining harmony. Can I take a photograph? What? Absolutely not. Okay, sorry. It gets under your skin. The bad people in this movie aren't really bad. They know that they will come to a wonderful place. It's a huge honor. That's a very strange thing about this movie. These people are incredibly sensitive and love sharing pain and love sharing happiness and love sharing every emotion. And for Danny, that's obviously difficult because she's been told to be quiet for so long. But ultimately, you're in this amazing setting where nothing goes wrong except everything goes wrong. I could see a person being outraged by it entirely. It's really incredibly intense and shocking. The hope is that everyone will have experienced or will know one of the dynamics that you see represented on, on the screen or, or at least one of the characters. To see everything, to experience everything, they are going to have a journey that is up and down. I guess I hope that people will feel moved and unsettled. It's been really exciting collaboration. It's been really, really fun.